Christian monks. So you want that nice brown ring around the top. Typically people find it. Do let us know in the comments. We read every single one. Hello. Today I would like to show you a very quick video from fixing my vintage Sony computer speaker system. The model number is SRS PC15. This is going to be used on my vintage computer that I'm using for programming all radios and microcontrollers. The, the look of this speaker is absolutely amazing. That's not the front. This is front. Here we've got the nice Sony logo and the speaker is actually firing in that area. I'm going to show you that in a second. And here you've got the mounts. So I'm highly recommending you try to guess where they are be fitted. And if you are thinking about side of a computer screen, just like uh, ears on two sides of CRT screen, then you are correct. They are going exactly into that place or they can just sit next to the CRT or a uh, computer. But on the side of the screen, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And just like I told you, here is the the speaker and that's the area of course everything is made by Sony that was the most simple repair that take me a long time and I'm going to tell you where I make mistakes with my assumption and how to correct them while working on uh, audio devices it's good to have a signal generator i'm feeding a 500 hertz just that i've got a steady tone and because of that i'm being able to quickly find the problem and it's not going to be that obvious first what is the problem the problem is that this speaker is not working. What was the common problem? The most common problem is, of course, the hardware. And we have to check does the problem is in this cable or in the speaker itself. So if we grab our signal generator, we can feed directly that speaker without any amplifier and we should hear a faint buzzing sound. And yes, it's working so that's not a problem here. And my bet, something that I was sure is going to be the problem, I assume that it will have a blown TDA amplifier AC. So here you can see the TDA. I'm going to locate that to, to I'm going to rotate it in seconds so you will be able to see. And that was my first assumption. So I grab oscilloscope. This is the oscilloscope. I hook it up to the to the ground. I open the manual for the for the TDA. The model number for the TDA is uh, TDA2824 because I don't know all the pinouts. I open the PDF. I located where is input. I found that the signal is going here. So this is going to be our channel that got the problem. So this is the side that we are interested. I probe it, I probe the input and with my oscilloscope and I was unable to see anything. 
So my assumption was that, okay, it's completely blown and it's sinking whole signal and pull it to the ground. That was my assumption. And I unsolder it. As you can see, I was so angry that I put uh, two deep sockets <laughs> because I was I was resoldering that uh, three times. I remove it. I hook up the signal. So how I I fit the signal? I of course grab the grab the input. I set the signal generator a little bit lower, and I'm going to hook up the power supply. And one channel is going to be working and the second channel is not. We are connected. One channel is working, second not. So we know that we've got a problem with this channel. And that was my assumption. I remove it from circuit. I feed the signal, just like that, I feed the signal and I feed the signal and it was not there. And I start poking every capacitor that was acting like a DC filter backwards, backwards, which was a completely stupid idea. Always when you've got a problem, start from a input signal. And I located the problem. The problem was in this socket. And this socket, let me let me find the no worries I'm touching the that lid. We've got the input tool. That's the socket. Here is uh, headphones. And the idea was when you've got this in front of your computer, this cable goes to the back. And if your friend came with a MP3, and that was a very long time ago, so if they tell you that, hey, I've got a new song, you grab just a cable and you feed your signal here, and then you didn't have to unplug your computer, you just feed it here. And when you plug something, it's disconnecting the back, the back connector and route the input signal from that socket. And that was a problem. I clear it with a isopropyl alcohol. I connect it a couple of times, plug it, plug out and it starts working again. I connect the probes at the input of the of the amplifier. I've got a, a signal, I check. Just like this, on top I've got my function generator and on bottom I've got the oscilloscope. All the pots, everything was perfect. The sinus signal looked exactly the same of the both side. I put the TDA back and it didn't work. It didn't work and that's because the TDA was blown. The TDA was blown. I've got same problem. The same channel have a blown TDA that was sinking to the to the ground and the second problem with the same channel that was not connecting here. That was absolutely amazing. And that's a quick fix. So I order the TDA and this is what arrived. The seller sent me a TDA 2824S and S in that naming stand from a single inline package, the SIP. So I was unable to fit it and I had to wait to get a proper TDA 2824. 
So today we are going to make a test whether we make a good fix and I already tried that by swapping the IC but this is the official try where we are going to get uh, both channels working so I'm going to kill the power here and let's try to lift the, the IC I've got a proper tool for that, but I I lost it. I put it somewhere. So sadly, we have to do this this very not nice way. And I always recommend you putting a socket that's absolutely give you a very quick way to diagnose devices like this because you can just swap ICs and see what's going on. And before, when I swapped them, it didn't work. And it didn't work because the signal was not coming there. I soldered everything back and traced the problem. I powered it on and it didn't work. So here we've got our TTA. And we are going to, to mount it. And we are ready to try So as you can see, we've got a good fix, good fix with absolutely crazy story. I'm going to put everything back. As you can see, they are attached next to the CRT screen and we can grab a MP3 file into the Winamp and we can feel like many years before, many years ago, and Hello everyone, welcome back to Ambition Monks. So you want that nice brown ring around the top. Typically people find it, do let us know in the comments. We read every single one. They sound absolutely amazing. So as you can see we've got absolutely great setup. This is how looks the front. In between you've got a CRT screen, we've got the power switch, volume adjustment, bass, additional input for uh, MP3 that's going to disconnect the, the back source. And here, as you can see, I've got the adapter for the Sony 9 volts power supply. I've got just a bunch of them. And here we've got a standard DC barrel connector. So this is how it looks like. As you can hear, we've got a good fix. I'm extremely happy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find that interesting. See you next time and bye bye.